So question is, people ask me all the time, Richard, you've spent 40 years in you know, museums, you're a museum person, what makes a museum person, and you know, why do people do it? And you know, just note in the United States, we have tens of thousands of museums and historical homes and museum-like places. Uh, so there's a lot of people working in the, the, the museum sector. And uh, I, I think people get into it in a variety of ways. Some people are educators, they look at uh, this is the tangible objects that could really inspire. Uh, my wife is a school teacher, but she would regard herself as a museum person, and she finds, she having that object, I could talk about it, I could show it to the kids, they could touch it, feel it, they know what it, they, they, they can, it, it gives them an extra, extra uh, way into uh, art or history or science or creativity. So, uh, I think we have educators that, that like, we have collectors in the museum world who just love to collect. Uh, I, I collected comic books and baseball cards as a kid. I was pretty upset when my mom got mad at my dad and threw away my collection. <laughs> my mom's 98 years old, I still haven't forgiven her. But, uh, so we have some people who, who just love the collecting uh, uh, aspect of it. Uh, we have um, uh, others that I think see the, the larger role that museums play in society as really a, a kind of forum, almost part of our civic culture. Uh, they're one of those few places that, you know, um, not a religious institution. They're not like City Hall where people are gonna argue with each other. They're not in the courts, which are adversarial places. But museums are like kind-hearted places in our society. They're, they're safe spaces. And they're secure places where people can gather together hear good stories, see great things, be inspired, talk to each other, and go home a little more enriched. Um, I also think as we found in the, the, the Smithsonian, sometimes as when we built the Air and Space Museum back in uh, 1976, they mark great national achievement. Uh, our most recent museum at the Smithsonian is the National Museum of African American History and Culture. And there you get the sense of, uh, and that was, the, the law was signed by President Bush, it was totally bipartisan, President Bush and President Obama uh, op opened it uh, uh, up. Uh, it's been visited by world leaders, uh, our own, people from across the, 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 the world, and really. Uh, and, and you look at that museum and the idea for museums to tell stories that have been kind of disappeared from history, disappeared from consciousness, that opened people's eyes up to something, and so we have many people coming to the museum and say, I never realized. You know, of course I know about slavery and Jim Crow and segregation and all this, but to see that and feel that in the museum, I think you're doing an act of, um, of civic education, restoring some fabric of respect and understanding, and hopefully, hopefully enabling people who come to that museum and people who hear about it and their friends and relatives and others, to maybe be inspired to make our country a little better. And so I do believe that the, the museums have a, a kind of betterment function within our society. They're certainly on the side of knowledge versus ignorance. They're certainly on the side of respect and understanding versus intolerance. And they're certainly on the, on, on the side of, um, of uh, pointing us, I think, to a better future. Uh, where we can realize a lot of our ideals and dream. And so I think museums are pretty powerful and I think people who believe in that, that's a pretty big mission and it's a good mission. I believe at my heart it's a public service mission, it's a community mission. Uh, and so I understand why so many people are in it and that's what I do every day or try to.